Okay, everybody, I want to talk a little bit of this morning about Lori Alexander, just a little bit, because I try not to talk about Lori, and I'm going to explain that in a moment as well. If you don't know who, who I am, if you don't know me, I'm Suzanne Tidkumar. I used to have a column I wrote daily called No Longer Quivering for Pathios. I did that for 10 long years. Can you believe that? That is so long. And I wrote primarily about the quiverful movement, but I also wrote about a ton of evangelicals. And one of the evangelicals I wrote about a lot was Lori Alexander. If you could do the YouTube things, hit like, subscribe, click the bell notification, that'd be good. Don't bully anybody I'm talking about here. Don't bully Lori. Don't even go after her at all or anybody connected to her. Just don't even be rude to each other in the comments and I'll be happy. Okay, so here's the deal. I used to write about Lori Alexander a great deal. She has a website called The Transformer Wife. That's what she brands herself as, even though they were previously, there were other transformed wives, so she's not even original with that. She wrote a book some years back called The Power of the Transformed Wife. Hey, Carolyn. And before that, she had a blog called Always Learning. Now it's called The Transformed Wife. Now, I'm not crazy about a lot of her stances. A lot of them, things that she promotes, I don't like. I don't like the promotion of anything by Debbie and Michael Pearl, because you know I think that they are downright evil. I've talked to people that said that Michael Pearl's discipline of beating your children into submission came from his grandma. His grandma apparently used to wail on him like crazy. So these things trickle down. Lori gets it now and is like, oh, it's the best way, blah, blah, blah. I wish that were so. I wish that was true. Because that would be like awesome if you had a foolproof way for raising your children. But unfortunately, there's not. So Lori spewed a lot of bad ideas at her website. And I used to pick them apart. Not pick her apart. Pick her ideas apart. And it earned me some of the craziest trolls I've ever had in my life, including a man I had to take out a restraining order against, both in the States and in Costa Rica, because he started taking it to some very crazy toxic levels, what he said he was going to do to me. And to add insult to injury, grievous injury, Ken Alexander, her husband, tried to contact mine on a night when my husband was sick and I'd actually called for a loratorium. I wasn't going to talk about Lori Alexander at all. So this is likely the only time I'm ever going to talk about Lori here. And the reason that I'm talking about it today is I saw on Reddit, of course, a Reddit that was linking to a fundamentalist wiki where the hell is information on fundamentalists. And I saw something on that that they said about the Alexanders that was incredibly false. So here I am, I'm defending the Alexanders just a little bit on this super hot morning. My guests are out doing their honeymoon thing in their car, so I'm at loose ends, except for ironing this giant pile of ironing behind me. That's the last thing I have to do. And it's funny because Lori and I are of a similar age, a similar background, and we're 180 degrees away from each other, yet we do a lot of the same things, which is kind of funny. So one of the things that the fundamentalists have really been bent out of shape about. Can you recommend a book for me to be familiar with the subject? The names are all ones I've heard before. Carolyn, I think with the Quiverful movement, Catherine Joyce's book, Quiverful, is a good place to start. And all you have to do is go look at Lori Alexander's website, thetransformedwife.com. To get a feel for what's going on, the Pearls have a number of books, but you don't really need to buy any of their books. You could just look at their theology online. Their website is, uh, to tr their book is To Train Up a Child. I think their website is, um, what is that website? Why am I drawing a blank? Um, but if you, Google Michael Pearl will pop up. I'm totally having a senior moment here and forgetting what the name of their ministry is. No. Upgrade above rubies.com. That is um, one of the early quiverful enforcers. That would be Nancy Campbell. 
So there are all these websites and they're all interrelated. They all like each other. They all push the same sort of things. Lori, Lori's big thing is you have to stay home and raise your children. And I'm not going to dispute her with that because I kind of think if you have children, if you can work your schedule around your children, it's really the best. My husband and I did it for some years where I worked nights and weekends. He worked days and that was how we did it because that worked for us. Somebody was always with the children. Nobody doing anything differently as far as how it works for them. I'm a big believer that you work things or how they work for you, your family. And you don't say, okay, everybody must do X, Y, and Z. Because we're all so different. Our cultures are different. All of that. So what works for you may not work for me. And that's cool. That is absolutely cool. That's part of the divergent things that God has done, where he's given people all kinds of different theologies and different ideas. And they all lead back to the same thing. So there you go. So Lori wrote this book and I read the book and I remember laughing at parts of it and parts of it just like being horrified because one part she talked about personal finance and women and her only her only ideas were buy used to save the difference and don't use credit cards, which is the most childish information you could put out there. I wrote a long, long, long piece rebutting that, showing how as a woman, you need to build your own credit, what that looks like, what it looks like to take advantage of good offers to save money. I mean, when I opened up my Amazon card, I, they gave me $150 credit and I get you know money back. So it's worked out well for me. Oh, speaking of which, I got to pay my credit card. Let's do it today. Um, so there we go. That's it. So Laura gave advice on everything from eating to fashion tips to everything you could just imagine. And some of her stuff has been horrifying, like when she talked about using beef tallow to moisturize her skin. I tend to stay with organic coconut butter products, coconut oil products and cocoa butter because I have very sensitive skin, but I'm not about to rub beef towel on my skin. That's her personal choice. And we've all laughed over it because it is kind of weird. Um, but one of the big things, the big point I have to correct about Lori's today is Lori has a lot of bad ideas. Uh, I'm not going to dispute that and I'm not going to go over all of them because it, I would be here all day going over those damn things. Um I leave Lori alone for the most part. And why is that? Not because her husband contacted mine. That actually didn't go very well. He trudged into the bedroom with the flu that day and said, can you deal with that idiot that's on there who's PMing me that I need to discipline you? So we both got quite the laugh out of it. And he wanted nothing to do with this guy. He just said, this guy's got some issues. I'm not dealing with him. And at that point, I'd already announced my Toring where I wasn't going to speak about Lori anymore. It had nothing to do with the trolls. It had to do with the fact that Lori's husband announced, and, and she announced that he had, she had a reoccurrence of a brain tumor. You know, anybody going through a real medical crisis, I am not going to pick on them. I'm not going to, I'll give them a pass for a while, at least. And then when she came back from treatment for the tumor, it started to be that she never really, to me, she never seemed right again. So I never, I've never picked on her. I leave her alone. I have my own opinions about her theology. I think some of it is downright dangerous. <clears throat> I follow her daughter, Alyssa, because Alyssa does yoga and other things that I like. And it's been interesting. She does a bunch of clean eating things. And if you know anything about me, you know, I have, such severe allergies that I react left and right. So the rumor that goes around Reddit and other places is that Ken Alexander cheated on Lori. Cheated, cheated, cheated. Well, Lori says it's not a valid reason to leave your husband. I don't know. From here, it seems like a pretty valid reason. I already told my husband, you do that, it's over. Because I have standards. I had some lines that I told him to not cross those lines because of my ex-husband. And if you did, you'd be gone. I was married very briefly, right out of college, right out of high school. 
to a guy that was older than me that didn't have good motives and he was abusive. So I came into my 35 years now, 35 years of marriage to this wonderful, sweet, nice guy named Jim with a few, hey, don't ever do these things or I'm going to run off and sue the hell out of you, basically. And one of those things is something that's a rumor. It's really rumored about in, in the world of people who watch Lori and follow Lori. Here's the thing. I don't think he ever had an affair. I don't think so at all. I'm going to put a link to this post that made everybody think he was having an affair or he had an affair. It's a post on Lori Alexander's blog, The Transform Wife, called When Her Husband Came Home After an Affair. Okay. And here's the thing with this post. Everybody misunderstands it. It's not about Lori's husband having an affair. It is about somebody that she's in contact with whose husband did have an affair and then came home afterwards. And Lori is basically saying, if he comes home after having an affair with regrets, you just welcome him with open arms instead of with that machete like I would probably be after my husband would. Get away from me. And forgiving is way different than forgetting. But in that culture... Forgiving is forgetting, and it is, you're not allowed to have emotions, those kind of strong emotions. So this article, I'm going to go over it, it says, first uh, paragraph, her husband in an affair, she fought for his future than her own happiness. Look, if somebody is telling you that you have to put your happiness aside in all things to be a good Christian wife, don't listen to them. Don't listen to them at all because they, they're missing the boat on that. And even in the midst of great trials and troubles, you can have a little glimpses of happiness. You can have those happiness moments. I, I mean, I saw that very clearly the other day when I was walking the beach and everybody and their brother was on this estuary beach that is a turtle sanctuary doing all the crap that's listed on the sign that's forbidden. And I was very angry. I was very angry, upset, and depressed that so many people thought that their own, their own ideas were reasons to stomp around and ignore the rules instead of protecting sea turtles. So there I was. I was angry. I was kind of depressed. I was sad. And I found a pile of sea beans. I found the kind of sea beans that are our hearts oh hey arctic timber wolf i was thinking about you the other day wondering how you were doing i'm doing okay i just had a car wreck and uh, our car wasn't totaled i have to say my nissan actually is a really safe car apparently so we're still driving it while we're waiting to get an estimate on how much the damages are going to cost to repair it's a brand new car we've had it nine months and somebody crashed into us not at a high, high speed, but a high enough speed where we should have been having more injuries than just picking glass out of our scalps and getting a little bit of whiplash. So this article where she's talking about this, and if you can forgive your husband and move past it, more power to you. I just know myself, I can't get over that stuff. There are certain things that are a no-go for me. Infidelity would always be a no-go. And I think if I were to cheat on him, that would also be a no-go. We would both be divorcing each other. So there's that. And, okay. So she's talking about how God told this woman to win her disobedient husband without a word, in spite of the pain and suffering he was causing her. So he came back. And... Um, talking about her crying, her husband would hold her when she was crying and upset and had and said that he was crying over what he'd done and all that. Well, you know, if you can do that, fine. That's great. Not everybody can do that, okay? And this came out of Lori's super secret chat room. She has a chat room that she has. She calls it a chat room. It's really just like a, a Facebook group 
These sons are good cars. I've been a, a lot of wrecks. Oh, goodness. Not me. This is the first wreck I've had since 1983 when I got hit when I was in my Volkswagen Beetle. 1968 Volkswagen Beetle. And it destroyed the engine and it, and it tore the, tore the uh, axle out. The rear axle. But we were just bruised in that, too. So I hadn't had a wreck in all these years. So this was a new one for me. Okay, back to Laurie. So she's talking about this. So she goes to quote the woman's story from the chat room, okay? And she puts quotation marks. But she doesn't do any of the formatting. <laughs> I was young then. I was like 23 when I had that accident. Um, she, she doesn't do any formatting to indicate this as quotation, which kind of blows my mind because... She was using an old-fashioned C CMS platform, and there is a quote function on that, but she didn't use it. If she had just used the quote function, it would shut up all these people that think she, her husband had an affair and that she forgave him. It would put lie to that in a hurry instead of her bad formatting, causing everybody to think that he had an affair. I read it that way, too, the first time I read it. So it goes on and on, the quotes that she did, uh, their beautiful moments in my marriage to watch true repentance happen is wonderful. Okay, so it took almost two years that the husband confessed his affair and they had true repentance. And, the, and he kept apologizing to her and telling her he wanted the marriage to work. Um. So she talked about her husband didn't have true godly repentance and sorrow over it until almost two years later. And they were both working on it. That's all good. If you are having that kind of problem in your marriage and you want to put it back together, that's what you need to do. So this story is all about the battle they had to forgive each other and to move on and to apologize and all that nonsense. Well, not really nonsense, but what needs to happen? It's one, two, three, four, five, six paragraphs. And in those six short paragraphs, everyone reads it and thinks, oh, Lori's talking about herself. No, Lori doesn't know how to format his problem. Lori's husband did not cheat. That story is not about him. I do not care what the people on Wiki, Fundy, Fundy Wiki are saying. It's not true. She has never said he had an affair. He's never said he had an affair. This posting, which was from her chat room, from somebody else entirely, the woman talked about how her husband had cheated and they had a two-year journey to forgive that and move on if you can do that more power to you i can't do that i know that about myself and the only reason i know that about myself was because of my first marriage my ex kept returning and i just took it back once it was a huge mistake never again never again never again so i make sure that when those things happen well those things have never happened in my marriage but my thing now is if that ever happened to me in a relationship again, that would be the end of the relationship. Now, one of the things that Alexander promotes is staying with your husband no matter what, no matter what, no matter what, and forgiving him and being smiling and taking care of him joyfully. I don't know if that's even possible without value and librium quite frankly, or some kind of high-level brainwashing because it's really hard to cater to somebody else's somebody else's uh, life the entire time. And I've done it. I, I had years where I lived exactly like Lori. Now, I, you know, we have different ideas about different stuff. I took some of my money and bought air, airline stocks. Well, not our airline stocks, but airplanes manufactured stocks recently. And I told him what I was doing. He said, I disagree with you. And I said, that's fine. This is just a wild hair up my ass. I'm going to do it. And we have those kinds of situations. But most fundamentalist women will tell you, you cannot have independent thought from your husband. You have to vote the way he votes. You have to do what he says. You can't handle the money. 
And I'm also going to link to that chapter in, that I wrote about in NLQ because it was pretty intense. Most of the time in her book, it was just silly stuff like talking about being angry with her husband on their, um, in which airplanes? Well, I bought Boeing stock and I know Boeing stock is tanking because of the problems they're having with their um, seven blank seven crew, their 747, 757. They're having some de design flaws and they're having some things that have happened as a result. But I'm feeling bullish about them because they have contracts with NASA. They're trying to develop different types of, I guess, airspace kind of um, things. Um, so they're, they're trying to do a lot of different things right now and they're getting hammered in the press. So when the price of their stock went down, I bought some, I don't think Boeing is down for the count yet. I think there are more profits to be made. And I also bought some Embraer stock. Embraer is made in South America. They're starting to make more and more planes. I also bought some stock in, um, Oh, shoot. What's the name of that company? Airbus. I bought in those three primarily and a couple of little ones. Because that's one thing I've seen here in Costa Rica after living here. Once COVID lifted, everybody and their brother has come here. We had the worst high season I've ever seen. I was telling my tale of my little blessing in the middle of my mental tantrum because everybody and their brother was on the beach trying to dig up turtle eggs. That happened, and I found my moment of joy when I got those sea hearts because I'd been searching for sea hearts for some months, and I hadn't seen them, and there they were just sitting there in the sand, pretty as a picture, waiting for me to come along and pluck them up. And go, look, 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 look. <laughs> I drove my husband nuts, and I was grinning from ear to ear. So we have different ideas about different things, and that's fine. He's on a conspiracy theory rant right now, and he's agreeing he's going to vote for our, um. Robert Kennedy Jr. for president. I have no intention of voting for Robert Kennedy Jr., even though he is really good about the environment, but he's anti-vax. And I cannot get down with anybody who is anti-vax at all. I have had whooping cough like three times since I've been an adult with asthma. And it's always bad. I always end up very sick from it. So I've been revaccinated a number of times for childhood vaccinations, including whooping cough. God bless vaccines and doctors. That's another thing about Lori that's a little strange, but it's not strange when you look at how quiverful it is. Airbus is cool. Yeah. Yeah, Artie Timberwolf, I, I heard about that too. And I'm I'm down with Boeing now because they are definitely, they're definitely experimenting with some different stuff. And the contract with NASA and the thing where they're working on the thing together, that's that's a positive sign. Ah, hey, good evening from Norway. Good morning from Costa Rica. Well, it's actually almost lunchtime here. I'm fun fiddling around. We've had guests here. We've been traveling. We've gone hither and yon and doing all kinds of crap. So today I have to pay the piper. I have to do some ironing and I got to wash all my bedding. And tomorrow I get to make my, um, my border run to keep my, my passport in check. Oh, you're in Wisconsin, already Timberwolf. Is it still cold there? Cause I know they're having all kinds of BS going on there with snow and all over the U.S. right now. Did everybody get their taxes done and filed, all of you that are U.S.? Because today is the deadline if you haven't worked on it. And I would recommend filing for an extension if you haven't finished, because if you owe money and you don't file the extension, you have to pay interest on on the, on the what's owed. I've, I did my last week and there was crying, there was shouting, there was all kinds of stuff because it's a pain in the butt. Oh, it is snowing right now. It was 70 degrees yesterday and today it's a blizzard. I've been watching people complaining about that. And yeah, that would make me crazy. We're having the hottest dry season on record. It's been like 105 with the heat index every day. So what's about 10, 1030 hits? I'm inside. I, I just can't take the heat anymore that intensely. 
some inside for a while and then come evening when the sun starts slipping down and the temps go down, I go out and water my plants and do my thing outside, swim, all of that. Uh, yeah, so I was just talking about bowling and I was talking about Lori. So Lori doesn't like medical care at all, even though she's benefited from the cyber knife or her, her brain cancer. And I still don't talk to talk about her much because of the brain tumor. If you have a brain tumor, it can make you say and do some crazy things. And after having two strokes, all I can say is it changed my personality in some weird ways and made me much more likely to flip out. And knowing that, knowing my limitations, who I am, all of that, I have to take into account that she may be going through something similar with what she's going on. So I can't pick on her for that. There's no way. If your brain tumor is talking, you may say crazy things. Same thing with a stroke. So she believes in mostly no medical care except for herself, apparently, and uses like black salve and elderberry syrup and various other things. And there's nothing wrong with that. I had a bad cold last week and I managed to kill it with some uh, tea that I got that it had ginger and lemon in it, and ginger and lime. I was just pounding that and it, and it helped. It helped a lot. So I'm not totally throwing away with the bath water all herbal medicine. Some of it's really good, but there's a point where you can't really rely fully on it. And if it gets to that point, you go to the doctor. I'm a big believer in that, even though I didn't go to the doctor after my wreck. I think young people will have TBI from the loud bass years down the line. That could be, that could be because I discovered last week that I don't have much hearing in this ear. This one's fine. My right one doesn't hear really well. And I've always been one of those people, you talk about loud bass, loud. I have played in bands where the volume was so loud, even with an in-ear, an in-ear monitor, you have a hard time hearing your own voice. And you have to hear your own voice in order to be able to sing on key. So there were many times when I was in that band, I was like, oh, I hope I'm on key. I hope I'm on key. Because there was no way to really determine that. Hey, Moonchild Pink. So there's really no way to determine whether you're on key or not when it's that loud. So I'm not a big fan of loud sounds. Last night we went to dinner every Sunday night thing. We'd just go to the beach there in Costa Rica, sit at the beachside bar and watch our friends play music. Last night was the first time I was like, told my husband, it's like, we can't sit down there with Robert August and the other people. We got to sit up here. Because I was reacting to the loudness of the bass and everything else. So now you need to, all you need to know about Lori Alexander is she wrote a book. She wrote several books, and I've read all of them. I didn't even bother to do a review of the second one because it had some very distinct silliness, and it. it was pages and pages for you to write notes in. Um, but her theology can be summed up. Husbands are always right. And you have to smile and submit. Traumatic brain injury from the concussion from the base is the same as explosives. Soldiers. I did not know that. I did not know that. That's pretty crazy. I'll have to take a look at that, too. I'm getting ready to go plant uh, some organic lemon tree seeds and see if I can get some lemon trees rooted I have my container garden for the first time ready to go here in Costa Rica. I'm going to do that today, too. And then I will schlep all the containers outside once it gets cooler here. It's just crazy hot. Wow, that is that's crazy, Arctic Timberwolf. I did not know that. I better tell my son because he plays his music ungodly loud, including the bass line. Okay, guys, I'm going to go. I've been trying to be less verbose and more succinct. Like I said, if you run across the rumor that Ken Alexander cheated on Lori Alexander, it's all based upon this one silly blog post she wrote when her husband came home after the affair that is her quoting somebody in the chat room, and it's not her. It's not him. It's not her. And everybody in... The anti-quiverful movement acts like it's a done deal, but no, it has nothing to do with him. 
So, okay, so you guys have a happy Monday. It's tax day. It's a day that all income taxes are due. I hope you guys are all good with that. Me, I'm going to do some indoor gardening on my little containers and then outdoor later. Love you guys. Thank you for watching.